A little introduction to the Farm All A project. This tractor I bought, oh, before, I believe it was four years ago, three or four years ago. And when I bought it, it had a battery sitting right here. It used the mounting holes for the toolbox, I believe. And it had some homemade battery tray there. I think I threw it on the shelf here. Yeah, that's it right back there. Let's go take a look. I thought it was welded on because I've seen these sloppy welds on this hinge here. I thought it was welded right onto the damn tractor, but luckily it wasn't. But anyways, I got that off, um, or my nephew got it off for me yesterday. Uh, this switch was on there for the lights, um, in, right in the middle of the Ferguson project here too. They had used a bunch of washers to fill in the big hole here that uh, mounts the original type switch. It's a big knob and then it has off, high, and low, I believe. And then the, the tail light, they had a rubber, one of those rubber replacement tractor tail lights on here. Um, I put this on yesterday. It has the original mounting bracket, which is a a cast iron uh, stock holder and then it has a, a light stock here. I got to take that back off and paint it. We were just making sure we had the right lengths. Uh, my nephew made me a new loom and put wire protectors on all the wires so I got to I got to go back and reduce or uh, run that stuff you know back here or wherever. This, uh, I put this on, it came with a John Deere, the, the guy put like some L brackets going across these mounts and mounted a John Deere green seat on this. It looked shitty as hell. That was the first thing I got rid of. But I bought this brand new and it almost immediately started disintegrating. I mean, the seat was, the seat was, uh, rotten and torn within months of buying it. Um, it's the biggest piece of shit. I don't know if, if it can even be salvaged. It had this really thin paint that started fading pretty much immediately. Um, and now it, you can't really even tell what color it was. It was supposed to be farm all red. Uh, the seat has turned kind of a uh, I don't know what the hell color that is. Uh, not maroon, but uh, magenta. Yeah, maybe it's magenta. And it should be farm all red. It's just a crappy paint. This, you know, it's all Chinese knockoffs. Who knows how well any of the other stuff. Like, this is supposed to be restoration quality. This battery box. I got rid of that other battery box, as you've seen on the shelf. This is where the battery goes. It's in a, a kind of a crappy position, but that is where it goes. I'm going to put uh, an original type toolbox back on there. And it had this gosh awful long cable on it. It's huge diameter because this was a six volt. This is a six volt uh, battery cable. I don't know what the hell size it is, but I got to get out the correct size battery cable on there and the ground cable. So it's got a bit, and then the, the uh, brakes have a little issue with sticking, so I have to open up this, uh, this floorboard. I got to get under here, and I think the re one of the return springs is broken which I have. I've had it for quite some time, but I haven't gotten around to working on it. 
and when I parked it, I parked it in the lawn last year, you could see it in a couple of the videos, and it wouldn't start from there. So we pulled this stuff off, and uh, the distributor cap is kind of nasty on the inside. The plug wires are kind of fraying. So we test, we did a bunch of tests on it, and we got it, actually got it to pop once after we started cleaning in the distributor cap. So what I did was order a new distributor cap, new plug wires. The plugs are fine. I believe the coil is fine. And I got a, an electronic ignition for this, like just like the one I got for the Fergie. Also, uh, like I said, this had them, them uh, real shitty uh, rubber. I don't know if I got one handy. Let's see if we can find one here real quick. Yeah, here's one. This is what was on the, on the front left. Well, looking at it on the front left. This is what was on this side. This is what su is supposed to go in there, this stalk and that light. Now, on this side, this is another story. I worked on this, oh, I don't know, maybe a day or two, trying to get this bolt. At first, I thought this was threaded in here at, at the back. I knew that the stock goes in here, the light stock. It's a shorter stock. I knew that the stock went in there, but I thought it must have some threads way at the back that was holding this monstrosity on here. That wasn't the case. I finally found out that it had a nut on the back, and this is just a nut that somebody ground. They cut it and ground it. It's all crooked and everything, and it was on there crooked. So we worked on this thing for quite some time yesterday. Uh, we find we got a wrench on the back, and then we put a breaker bar on there, and then uh, an extension on that, a piece of uh, black pipe extending that, and then uh, another piece of pipe on the wrench that was back here to hold it so that it didn't hit the the fan and we finally broke that thing free so I then cleaned it out I bought new uh, set nuts or oh what the hell are those called uh, whatever they are um, I got some new ones of these I tried I have the the uh, stock for that and the light and I put it on and because it has an alternator kit on it, it doesn't fit. It it comes right up to the to the alternator. So what I've done for that is I ordered I ordered another stock, one of these, I think they're seven inches or something like that. I ordered one for this side, and I'm not gonna put the full thing in. They're, they're two different lengths because the Farmall A is offset. It's a cult. It's made for cultivation, for cultivating your rows. It's got a cultivator on there right now, which actually works, and that is the correct color. They're blue. So looking at it from the front, this one should be shorter. They're they're not. Uh, they were never exact because, you know, if this one is just to the inside of this, uh, whatever that is, that, uh, oh, it looks like it just pinches the stock here for the um, steering. This must adjust outwards. Um, so this one was never like that. This, the other one is only like three inches or it's two and a half inches, so it would put the light right here, just on the other side of the fender. So I'm just going to go, I hear whatever I need to clear this, and put the light there. Just cut the, their forged steel, or forged iron, I'm not sure what the hell they are, but, and that's what this guy made this big, giant, 
monstrosity for just to hold that piece of crap light over on this side. And then every bit of wiring on this thing had splices and was taped together. So my nephew yanked it all out and put it in. Everything is in wire looms, you know, these really tough wire looms. And then there's a full wire inside that everything's shrink wrapped. He does an awesome job, so I won't have to worry about the wiring. So that's about it for the tour of this. We tried starting it a bunch, or actually he tried starting it a bunch of times uh, before he, because it always seemed like it was just about to go, before he popped off the distributor cap and that took down the battery and then we had it on the charger overnight and one of the clips popped off. For such a good charger, the NOCO Genius, an awesome charger, but uh, the clips are really weak and they, they fall off way too damn easy. So I'm going to try to get a charge on there. And then it rained, it rained the next night, so we, had to, we charged it for just minutes, and then we had to take it off again. So I'm going to try to charge this overnight. Oh, I, another thing. This ignition, or uh, actually it's a magneto cutoff switch, but that's what you got to use to start it. And then this is the starter, which, which uh, the starter actuator is probably what it's called, but that just pushes this button right on the starter and that's what starts it it's pretty damn simple i love the simplicity in these old tractors but i need there's a couple things i got to get that original light switch back on here i think he has just the wires inside there waiting for it this uh old ammeter is still the six volt one it only goes up to 30 amps and it's obviously water damaged. So I gotta pull that out of there and put a new ammeter in there. And I have that ordered as well. So I gotta get some battery cables ordered tonight. And I will be working on this here and there in addition to the Ferguson. This is not going to be a working tractor. Um, I'm going to try to get this relatively well restored. Oh, that's the first I've noticed that. That must be relatively new. You can see where whoever had this over the years, this has been welded many times, but this is, uh, that needs some welding before it breaks completely off. So there's a bit of work to do on this, but this doesn't leak anything. Um, hopefully it won't be as much of a, a pain in the ass as the Ferguson has been. It's already converted, even though, you know, I'm, it's got the same cogged belt or uh, segmented belt. This one's in a half inch. Um, this... This other belt seems a bit loose, and it's, uh, it feels like it has a bit of dry rot on there. So I might have to replace that. So, you know, there could be a can of worms in this one, too. You know, once you start taking things off like this uh, radiator, who knows what's going to happen. But this one has always run, but it's, it just started getting spotty. Um which I, you know, I'm guessing is due to that distributor cap. I mean, it could, it could just be that there was moisture built up in there. And, you know, I could have probably, if I should have looked at it, but I guess it's time to replace that. I'm going to put the, the electronic ignition in there and, and then hopefully this will be up to snuff. And then we're putting, we're putting this in a little shelter or we're actually we're putting it in the big shelter 
because of that that big stack on it and moving the lawnmowers into a, a littler shelter so I want to keep this out of the rain we're just going to use this for uh, parades and stuff it will never see any work again but it, it's really fun to drive especially being able to see the ground right right in front of you but I got to get some better parts and get rid of some of the homemade stuff this this uh, drawbar appears to be well it's either homemade or somebody did a hell of a lot of welding and goobering on it so I'll have to say I, I do believe it's well um, homemade though so I'll look into that it's either homemade or it broke pretty bad and and somebody repaired it but I have to see about getting a new one of those I, I made this this drop uh, hitch it, a hitch pin goes in there so I could run that little uh, manure spreader on it and then I pulled the kids around with that but I'm gonna get rid of that take that off too well that'll wrap it up for this introduction to the 1939 Farmall A Cultivision please subscribe and hit the little notification button if you want to receive updates when we post new videos about the A, about the Ferguson, about the horses, the horse pastures, and the buildings that we're going to be building here. Oh, we're also doing a bunch of stuff with this hay mow a little bit later in the year. So subscribe and you'll be notified when all that stuff starts. Thanks for watching and have a great day.